we are segregated so much of the time is the stuff that, um, that they think women are interested in, men might not be interested in, or black people are interested in, white people are interested in. But shows like this, shows like Hamilton, yep. shows like Rent, bring us all together. Hi, I'm Leah Palmieri, and welcome to Hits the Spot. Today on the show, we are joined by the multi-talented singer, actor, writer, audiobook narrator, and award winner, Leslie Odom Jr. He's currently starring in Pearly Victorious, a non-Confederate romp through the cotton patch, which is currently on Broadway, and it is pleasing audiences and critics alike. And if that's not enough, he's got a brand new album on the way, and right now we are so excited to talk about it all with Leslie here on Hits the Spot. Hey, Leah, thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. We are so happy that you are. <laughs> um, congratulations <clears throat> on Pearly Victorious. What a freaking show. Like, Thank you. this is incredible. Um, I'm so glad that so many people are getting to see this and yeah. love it. How's your return to Broadway been so far? It's been so fun. I mean, this time around, I have a couple little kids with me. The, first, the last time I was here, I was doing eight shows a week without, without the, the blessing yes. of these two little ones. So it's a, a little bit uh, harder, sort of, you know, energy wise. Or, you know, there's a challenge, mm -hmm. you know, with that energy wise, but I'm, I'm having a ball. Have they seen you in the show? Have they seen you in your like outfits and stuff? Yeah, my little okay. girls come to see the show a bunch of times. Oh, wow. She loves it. She's, she's six. And I think the show. Um, it works to you know to me it's like it's it's almost like um, I don't want to undersell it but like there's there's times because it's so joyful mm -hmm. and and you saw it I mean it's it's also it's got um, tremendous meaning it's impactful but it's silly too yeah, you know yeah. it's it's a good time and so there's that level I think that my daughter gets and then. Um, I hope that there's also some stuff that's, you know, we'll have deeper conversations about it yeah. as she gets older. But right now she just, she likes the silly bits. Yeah. So. That's so wonderful that she's even gotten to experience it like that already. Mm -hmm. This cast, what a group. I mean, this cast is extraordinary. Um, I want to imagine that you guys have like done fun icebreakers or bonding. So don't disappoint me. Have you done that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean... Uh, yeah, okay. a, rehearsal, a rehearsal process kind of is that already, you know, Kenny Leon, our director, Tony Award winning director, he's really fearless and experienced in building ensembles. And so Kara and I, people have commented, that's my leading lady, she's just so uh, astonishing yeah. and hilarious and heartbreaking yeah. in this show. Uh, Tony Award, you know, two-time Tony Award nominated actress. And, you know, Kara and I, uh, the, like I said, the rehearsal process is the icebreaker. You know, we had a couple of fights, Ooh. you know. But, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm a believer. I love a fight. Okay, yes. You know, I'm a, we might have one today. I'm oh, a believer okay. that, you know, a friendship really doesn't, a friendship really isn't real until yep. you overcome your first disagreement. Mm -hmm. How do you repair that? Also, you know, two people, uh, you know, people, you, you gotta come as you are to yep. the table and we're not, it's not gonna be flush all the time. Yep. So we have to be able to say when we don't agree, and so, you know, Kara, uh, she's small but mighty. Yes. And she would, you know, hike up her <laughs> pants and, you know, come right at me. So, but I, I loved that. So yeah, our, our icebreakers were actual disagreements, but people have commented on the great chemistry that we have. And <clears throat> I'd like to think that those fights had something to do with that. Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice. That's you get to when you get to the other side. That's a wonderful place. That's to be. right. So, yeah, you, there's mm -hmm. a there's a new understanding, yeah. and you got you got something to laugh about. Yep. So we had there was some, we stopped rehearsal a couple times Ooh. to have to to work through some stuff. Yeah, um, you are no stranger to a monologue. Um, <laughs> in Pearly Victorious, you have got a monster monologue. Yeah. Um, what is that like? Because I mean, it's. I, as an audience member, I just felt very like in it with you, like yeah. very like, you know, really watching. How are you getting through that? How are you preparing for that? Is it like, are you taking secret like deep breaths before you really step <laughs> up there and start that? Like how, well, how is your mind going at that point? Um, well, I mean, the I, I knew that like the, the f my first responsibility with this piece was to commit it to memory. Mm as deeply as possible, you know, because there's there's two different kinds of memory. You know, there's that short-term memory, yep. that stuff where it's like, yeah, yeah, I know it, yeah. 
kinda. Yeah. You know, don't ask me in an hour. Oh my, <laughs> in an hour it is gone. So I knew that this needed to get deep in there, and um, and so I, I really gave myself time with this material. I won't tell you how much time, but quite a bit of time mm. with the material. And then when we got in the rehearsal process, um, I think I, I learned this on. One night in Miami, really, mm -hmm. you know, that we also had some long passages. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time professionally I'd ever been given something like that. And I learned that they're very rarely monologues. Mm -hmm. Even monologues are dialogues. They're mm -hmm. scenes. The only reason why you keep talking is because somebody's nodding their head. Yeah. And it gives you the encouragement. You said, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> it gives you the encouragement to, right. keep, to keep talking or they look confused. And so you must... You must elucidate, you must mm -hmm. illustrate it for them in some way. So um, in the rehearsal process, it really was finding with my, with my wonderful, giving, generous co-stars, mm -hmm. finding the give and take mm -hmm. so that it didn't feel like it was all on my shoulders. So when we get to the end of that moment, um, it really is a celebration of, for all of us. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's excellent. Thanks. You do an amazing job. I, knowing that I was going to be able to talk to you about this, yeah. was, I was watching you during the show, especially when some of your other cast members were like really giving their monologues and going for it. Yeah. What are you thinking about during those times? Because like you just have this look on your face where like you are in it, but I'm like, is he thinking like <laughs> maybe I'll have a cheeseburger after the show? Like <laughs> I'm, I'm just wondering like how, what is actually going through your mind when you're watching this every night? When I'm at my best, um, and because you know, Broadway is these these things, they're only with us for a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I you know, I did Hamilton on Broadway for only a year, one year. Really? Hamilton's we're coming up on the ten year anniversary of Hamilton, but I was only I only knew that I had that role and that experience with me for a finite amount of time, and so um, I got plenty of time to think about cheeseburgers. Okay. <laughs> you know, when I when I'm yeah. at my best, I'm thinking the thoughts of the character. Mm. That's what's fun about it. What's fun about it is that you get to kind of um, set the cares of your own personal life mm. aside for a moment. You get to set, you know, we as actors, we play hide and go seek with our egos. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we all have this, this story, this narrative about ourselves and what we're allowed to do and who we are. And that's based off of who our parents told us, all those things. And uh, you get to pick up a new set of a new story about yeah. yourself when you play these characters. And so when I'm listening to uh, Billy Eugene Jones or Carrie Young, I mean, I'm thinking Pearlie's thoughts, I'm listening. Mm. And my, one of my teachers told me when I was, when, I think the best piece of advice I got from a, a teacher in college, he was, you know, Mladen was his name. Oh. Brilliant uh, act teacher, but he, you know, I'm gonna try to do my, my life then. You know, this guy, this guy, he's a he's a good actor. <laughs> I like this guy. He's a good actor. I want to see him someday when he's a good reactor. Ooh. You know, Malad mm -hmm. then was a big he, and I didn't even know what that meant sort of 20 years ago. But what he was like, that's really where all your spontaneity is gonna come from. Yep. Is when you're listening mm -hmm. and responding. Yes. Well, I know you have time to t to think about cheeseburgers but on stage you also get to eat. So, <laughs> yeah, so, and I, I don't know why I found this so fascinating, yeah. but and you don't see it often. So I was like, oh, he's eating. So are you eating? It's like, is it actually pie that you're having? What are you having? And do you control like, okay, I only have two bites of this. Like what is, what's that strategy there? Yes, my strategy okay. there. So, so I am eating pie. It's good pie. Mm. I'm sure. And I usually am fasting a little bit right before the show. So I don't feel, you know, uh, heavy and burdened down by mm -hmm. like a full stomach, so I'm really excited to get uh, to get that pie. I eat about two bites. I get the third bite, and I'm so excited to eat that bite. And then I'm interrupted. Yep. So it's like I hope that <laughs> this is so inside baseball. I love this. <laughs> but I hope that what the audience is getting the sense of that, like I really want to finish this pie, but I I've got something else yep. that's pulling me away from it. So I hope that you're feeling that. I am feeling that. Now that I'm whole. also feeling hungry, obviously, but <laughs> what kind of pie is it? It's sweet potato pie. Oh, it is. Okay, great. Wow, it's nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, the thing that I love about this show, too, yeah. is that it is bringing such a diverse audience there, too. And right. it was spectacular to sit in that and hear the way different people were reacting to things. Um, how is that experience from the stage for you? Oh, it's so wonderful. 
It's the dream. Mm. This is all I've ever, all I ever wanted to do was be a part of pieces of theater like this. I think that there's just something. So the show that brought me to the theater and a whole generation of us to the theater was a show called Rent. Mm -hmm. Heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard of that Hamilton one you referenced, yeah. but I've heard of Rent, yeah. <laughs> well, Rent was such a special piece of theater because it, um, I didn't know how rare it was mm -hmm. for pieces of theater to come along. That I, you know, the trifecta for me that I got from that show is, you know, when a piece of work can be artistically fulfilling, culturally relevant, and commercially successful. Yeah. That's really hard to do. Um, Hamilton did that. Pearly Victorious is doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, is yeah, when it's when it's checking all those boxes, it's so fun to do. It's a part of the cultural conversation, the zeitgeist, yeah. and people are actually finding their way to the box office to mm -hmm. buy tickets. Shows like this, you know, they're good for the whole business yeah. because you know, we are segregated so much of the time, even in these Broadway houses, the mm -hmm. stuff that um, that they think women are interested in, men might not be interested in, or black people are interested in, white people are interested in. But shows like this, shows like Hamilton, yep. shows like Rent, bring us all together in a Broadway house. And so they're very special. I want to talk a little bit about You Have New Music. Yeah. Very excited about this. Um, you've got a whole album on the way, but let's talk a little bit about the first single, which is Show Me. Yeah. Yeah, this, uh, this project feels different. It was created different. It feels different. I think I've been... Um, searching for a for a costume mm -hmm. as a musician for a long time you know it took a long time to say and believe that i'm enough and this this project is the first one that i i allowed myself to believe that there's there's songs that um and it all sounds i, I think it's the best thing we've ever put out yeah. you know, sonically in every way it's the most professional gorgeous thing we've made uh but there's songs that are the demo vocal. Oh, wow. You know, and my, my team, uh, my producers and I have learned to, they record the demo mm -hmm. vocals in a way that if we want to leave them alone, they can. Because when we first started recording, I'd want to leave a demo vocal, but we just hadn't recorded it professionally right. enough. So now we do that. But yeah, there's things, I didn't record it 500 times, mm -hmm. you know. I, I can be a perfectionist and be hard on myself in that way. But there's this, this project, um, just came out of a lot of growth and personal mm. development. and I love to hear that this, you know, especially this musical journey really got you to a place where you're feeling nice and cozy in your own skin. Like that's, yeah. that's really nice. The, the, the second single that comes out right before the record is a single called Loved. Mm. And um, yeah, it's just deeply personal. It, it features my, my son. My <gasps> son's got a little feature on it. Uh, oh, wow. Is Abel. he two? He's two. Oh, okay, great. All right, another superstar in the making. <laughs> there was there was a video that there was a video that when I'm away, the the nanny is very sweet. You know, she'll she'll send me videos because she knows I'm just pining mm -hmm. for my children every moment. And we just we cut a little line from one of those videos and we put it. And there's a reminder from him. He says, "Have fun, Dada." Mm. And so that's in the song. Just a reminder to have fun. I can't wait to hear this. Yeah. Um, speaking of hearing things too, you narrated the audio book that you wrote, yes. um, a children's book. You and your wife wrote this book um, called I'll Love You More Than You'll Ever Know, that's which is right. wonderful. What was the um, narrating process like for you? Was it fun? N audio books are the hardest thing in the whole business. Mm. I oh, do wow. a, little, a little, you know, a little bit TV, little movies, theater, albums. Audiobooks are the hardest thing. Wow, how come? Well, because uh, it's all focused. You know, this is a conversation. Yeah. Most things I do are a conversation. Audiobooks ain't a conversation. <laughs> That's that true. Is a, yeah. That is a four day, yeah. eight hour a day monologue. Mm -hmm. And um, you can't really rehearse, mm. you know, because it's, you can't memorize the book. Right. You, you have to cold read it, um, even if you've read the book before. And sometimes, you know, as you get tired and stuff, your mouth starts tripping up. Anyway, so there are times you you'll have a challenging page. Mm. Maybe it's got maybe it's got a couple quotes, and you and you've got to remember how to do those people and stuff. But then, so you get through a challenging page, Leah, and like you're like, "Whew, great!" And then you turn the page, <laughs> and there's more freaking words there. <laughs> it's 
So yeah, it's, they're hard. Yeah, wow. Super satisfying when you get done, though. Do you want to talk about Christmas? You have, sure. You have two Christmas albums. I do. Um, and so uh, once Halloween is over, we enter what I believe we officially call Mariah Carey season. Yes. But maybe we should call it Leslie season, I'm, well, no, honestly. I, I'm fine to be part of Mariah Carey okay. season. Okay, all right, great, yeah. all right, awesome. Um, do you know what the most popular of your Christmas songs is? Is it Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas? No. What is it? It's I'll Be Home for Christmas. Oh, wow. Yeah. Isn't that nice? That is nice. The U.S. Postal Service used it in their in their Christmas ad oh two years ago. Isn't that a, That's it was, so nice. It was so sweet. Have you ever been a stamp? <laughs> I've never been a stamp. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, I think you have to pass away to become a stamp. No, uh-uh, no. no. You can be alive and be a stamp? I'm going to start a petition. <laughs> I feel like you should be a stamp. <laughs> I Mariah like Carey should... first. Um, well, together. Okay, Toge- sweet. Like, I like yeah, it. yeah. All we'll right. do like duet stamps. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, we're going to play a little game now called Wits the Spot. Let's and go. so we're going to put you to the test a little bit. Um, again, this is, we're getting at that Spotify data for you. All right. Um, okay. Which emoji is most associated with your music on the Spotify platform, do you wow. think? Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. Which emoji? Yep. With my music? Yes. I hope it's a little heart. Oh, the red heart is number three. Oh. Yeah. Do you want to okay. know number one? Yeah. you want to take another guess first? So maybe it's a microphone. Is it a microphone? Oh, microphone is number six. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, great. It is um, the performing arts, the little masks. Is it? Yes. That's me. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's associated with you. Number okay. two is the sparkle. The little sparkles. I use those all the time, too. Okay, so that, cool. Oh, this is a really strong top three. I wouldn't know. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now you know. The music note is number ten. Just so you know. Thank so that you. Is there. Mm-hmm. Just in You're case okay. anybody else asks me today. They might. Now I'm going to know. Put it in your long-term memory, though, not your short-term memory. You better believe okay. it. <laughs> okay, good. Um, do you know the most popular age of people that listen to your music? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the most popular age. Oh, man, do I... Oh, my gosh. I have no idea. Yeah, just take a little guess. Okay, I'm going to take a guess. Yeah. 32. Oh, flip it. 23. That's yeah. right. Okay, sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. I love my little young and yeah. little twenty-three-year-olds. Oh, you are just really like making an impression on the younger generation. Speak into so. yes. Yeah, speak into that that recently graduated group. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, or yep. or maybe they didn't go to college. Maybe they're just making it out there in the world. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of graduated, some people are working on getting towards graduation, and so when we looked at some Hamilton stats, peak listening hours are between 3 and 5 p.m. each day, which means that's homework time. So they're using it to study and to learn, and so that's pretty good. Um, And then finally, what city listens to your music the most? Portland. It's London. Is that right? Yes, (laughs) yeah, yes, yep. Whoa. Yeah, Mm mm-hmm. Cheerio. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, you got to trip across the pond in your future, hopefully. Hip, hip. Yeah, <laughs> they're ready for you. <laughs> I got to go to London. Um, yeah, you got to go. We also looked at, if you are wondering where else people would be excited to yeah. see and hear more Please. of your music, um, the Bahamas, need... big Leslie fans. We need yep. this info. We need yep. this data. <laughs> we do. Um, Philippines, loving it. Barbados, loving it. So you've got fans all over the world. Barbados is yeah. where my people are from. Yeah. I did I did that Finding Your Roots with Dr. Henry Gates. My people, we come from Barbados. Amazing. Well, they know it, they feel it, and they listen to it. So... That's pretty good. Um, Leslie Odom Jr., it has been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thanks, um, everybody can brave Times Square to go <laughs> see Pearly Victorious. It is absolutely worth it. You are wonderful. This cast is wonderful. The show is wonderful. I'm so excited. Um, and When a Crooner Dies, your brand new album will be out available on Spotify November 17th. More music from you. We love it. And again, those Christmas songs, they're there and they're ready for you to stream them. So... Uh, <laughs> Taking it all in. Um, Leslie, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.